so um, I'm representing Casa Latina, and Casa Latina has been started um, 2010, and it is a Latino community center. Um, the Latino community is not very united, and so people don't know where to turn to find resources or to meet each other. And so the Casa Latina hopes to be that place where people can come, um, have classes, um, have parties, um, have places that are listed of resources, and have services there. We currently have staff the office for 12 hours a week, and we help people with whatever walks in the door from translating a letter that they got from the landlord to helping them apply for um, food benefits or Medicaid for the children, um, help them find a, an attorney for immigration issues. I mean, it's very broad and it all depends what people show up needing. Um, one of our challenges <coughs> is that there is very little data on Latinos in Washtenaw County. Um, they don't participate in the census to a great extent. Um, there's a lot of fear of immigration complications by participating in the census. So um, while working with the uh, county health department, we realized that there, we really had no data to use. And we thought it would be good to do a survey in, in the community to get the information that we lack. Um, the HIP survey that the county does, uh, it's called the Health Improvement Plan Survey, is done every five years. It's been done, I think, four times. And every time since 95, the participation of Latinos has gone down from like 3% to like nothing. And um, they do it on a landline for, by phone and in English. And so m many people, including myself, don't have a landline anymore. And if people have English uh, proficiency issues, if they call you in English, it's like, oh, I don't know what they're saying. So um, with this grant, we were able to um, have funding to do this survey. Uh, we did a pilot survey in the spring for uh, 60 participants just to test the instrument and, and the methods. And um, I have like a little sample of results that I'll mention in a minute. Um, then we went on to the full implementation, which is 500 respondents. And we have about 10 more to go. We should be done by the end of the week. So um, the plan is to then go back to the community and share with them what, what we found out from the survey. Um, there's a lot of community agencies that are just can't wait to hear what, what we find out from theirs. Um, so first I'll tell you what we found in the in the pilot survey, um, this the the pilot was only sixty, so it's very limited. So um, average income fifteen thousand um, dollars. More than fifty percent send money abroad to support family. Thirty percent diagnosed with depression. 11% say that their child attempted suicide. 11% say their child is afraid to go to school. 32% treated with less respect. 18% are insulted and call names more than once per month. Uh, and then it says it's, it's not representative of the entire county because this was the pilot. Um, so for the implementation survey, um, we 
have made sure that we have samples from all over the county, from all the um, zip codes, and specific, um, we tried to do by census track, but that's a little bit harder for us. Um, it's got three methods. It's door to door, and also in a group setting. We held groups at churches primarily. I'm going to do one group tomorrow night at Safe House. That would be the last group, uh, and also online. And they were both in English and Spanish, so you could take um, take it in either language as you prefer. Um, it has quantitative as well as qualitative data, and it is completely confidential so that people don't fear answering. There's no identifying information. In the survey, we have issues that are addressed, such as health-related health knowledge, attitudes, beliefs, uh, health-related behaviors, nutrition, exercise, smoking, uh, diagnoses and maintenance of chronic health conditions, access to health care, sources of health information, family planning, child health, social support and conflict, social cohesion, social capital and community engagement, social and neighborhood conditions, healthy food access, affordable housing availability, discrimination, economic opportunities, immigration, migration issues, and language and acculturation. So there is a lot uh, in this survey. There was 114 questions. Um, so as soon as we finish, which will be this week. Um, they'll get busy. Um, the uh, research people talk about cleaning the data and analyzing. I think of, oh, just throw it in the laundry, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, but um, the plan is that in March and in April, we're going to have some community meetings to bring back the results. <clears throat> and also to ask the community, now that you heard all this, what are the priority um, issues that we should address? And we're designing um, a prioritizer mechanism um, so that they, they'll get like uh, tokens that they will prioritize and then we'll see of maybe the top three, which ones we're going to tackle first, so that the community itself is saying what is important instead of us saying, oh, well, we're going to do this. Uh, we're also looking at grants um, that will help us address and put together um, interventions, as I got to find the right words, um, on things that we are guessing are going to come out of the survey, like um, um, keeping uh, kids in, in, to finish high school um, and um, teen pregnancy and to spread out the birth interval, interval so from one child to the next. And um, we're going to work on obesity as well. So we're looking for research projects that are out there. And, um, but at the same time, we want the community to tell us. We're on the lookout, but we got to see what they want to work on. And, um, and the survey is a partnership between the Washtenaw County Health Department, um, University of Michigan, and Casa Latina. So my time is up.